The Pennsylvania Game is made possible in part by... The Pennsylvania Public Television Network. In 1886, John A. Ryer, a German immigrant, started a business in Sharon on the Pennsylvania-Ohio border that's still going strong today. Ryer's is A, the world's largest shoe store, B, the first toupee manufacturer and retailer, C, home of the first brassiere factory, which originally featured bras made of ribbon and handkerchiefs, or D, the national repository for outdated currency plates. The answer is A. Founded in 1886 by John A. Ryer, a German immigrant shoemaker, Ryer's has grown to become the world's largest shoe store. Ryer's draws 1,000 customers daily and 3,000 on its busiest days to Sharon, Pennsylvania, an old steel town located 60 miles north of Pittsburgh. Owned since 1954 by Harry Jubilee, a second-generation shoeman from Pittsburgh, the family-run business stocks 175,000 pairs of shoes in its 36,000 square feet of space. Women's sizes run from 2 to 15 in widths from quintuple A to double E. Men's sizes go up to 22. Open seven days a week, Ryers attracts local customers and draws some 600 tour buses a year that drive here from as far away as Toronto. Chuck Christensen's hobby has grown into the world's most active such enterprise. An arachnophile, Christensen's basement in his Feasterville, Pennsylvania home is a pharmaceutical lab filled with A, snakes, B, spiders, C, bats, or D, bees. The answer is B, spiders. Thousands of plastic cups containing 50,000 living spiders line the shelves in the basement of Chuck Christensen's home in Feasterville, Pennsylvania, just north of Philadelphia. This is the lifeblood of Spider Farm, spelled with a PH, the world's largest supplier of spider venom. Christensen, a trained entomologist, painstakingly extracts or milks the venom from the specimens, which include everything from deadly black widows to fist-sized African king baboon tarantulas. One order, typically just a few drops of venom, can require hundreds of tranquilized spiders and the better part of a day to harvest. Spider venom, according to Christensen, who started this mom and pop operation as a hobby in 1980, is aiding scientists in the development of new medicines and in understanding how the human brain works. In 1789, Cornelius Holgate established the Holgate Brothers Company in Roxborough, Pennsylvania. Still thriving today, the company became famous as the nation's largest distributor of wood products. Which of the following is not true of the nation's oldest woodworking firm? A. It was the main supplier of wooden grease buckets used by the Union Army in the Civil War. B. It created the first cigar store Indians. C. It produced some of the earliest wooden educational toys. Or D. It designed replicas of the neighborhood trolley seen on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. The answer is B. The Holgate Brothers Company never made cigar store Indians. Started in 1789 in Roxborough, now a part of Philadelphia, the company originally made various types of wooden handles as well as other wooden products. During the Civil War, Holgate's grandson Silas manufactured the wooden grease buckets that hung from horse-drawn wagons. After the war, the company moved to Kane, Pennsylvania, located in the middle of the Allegheny National Forest, where it remains today. In 1929, with the help of Jarvis Rockwell, brother of illustrator Norman Rockwell, Holgate got into the toy industry, producing a line of educational wooden toys. Holgate's chief toy designer for 30 years, Rockwell was considered a pioneer in the industry. He developed an extensive line of hardwood toys designed to stimulate a child's creative instincts. In 1992, Holgate was commissioned by Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood to create replicas of the neighborhood trolley. Born in Pittsburgh in 1884, Evelyn Nesbitt moved to New York at age 16 and became known as the most beautiful artist model in America. Her life story was captured in the 1955 film titled A, The Bad and the Beautiful, B, The Original Beauty and the Beast, C, Woman in the Window, or D, Girl in the Red Velvet Swing.
The answer is D, Girl in the Red Velvet Swing. Evelyn Nesbitt was born in 1884 in Tarentum near Pittsburgh. At age 16 and beautiful, Evelyn moved to New York where she posed for artists and photographers. One journalist described her as, quote, the most exquisitely lovely human being I ever looked at. Charles Dana Gibson, famed for his Gibson girl, sketched Evelyn with her hair streaming down to form a question mark and called it the eternal question. Photographer Rudolf Eckmeyer Jr. captured the weary Evelyn sprawled across a polar bear rug and named his famous photograph, Tired Butterfly. In 1905, Evelyn married Harry K. Thaw, an unstable millionaire from Pittsburgh. A year later, her jealous husband shot and killed Stanford White, her former lover, and Thaw was sent to an asylum for the criminally insane. Evelyn, divorced and struggling, took stage and film parts to survive. She died in 1967 in a Hollywood nursing home, having lived to see the 1955 film about her life, Girl in the Red Velvet Swing. Inventor Nathaniel Wyeth, brother of painter Andrew Wyeth, was born near Chadsford, Pennsylvania, into America's foremost family of artists. What invention was patented by Nathaniel Wyeth in 1973? A, the plastic soda bottle. B, the VCR. C, the telephone answering machine. Or D, Velcro. The answer is A, the plastic soda bottle. Nathaniel Wyeth's two sisters and his brother Andrew followed in the footsteps of their father, artist and illustrator N.C. Wyeth. Nathaniel, a budding inventor from childhood, was more interested in figuring out what made things work. He graduated from the University of Pennsylvania's engineering program and eventually went to work at DuPont Corporation in Wilmington, Delaware. In 1967, Wyeth began work on his best known invention, the plastic soda bottle. He developed a resilient and safe plastic that could withstand the pressure produced by a carbonated beverage without exploding. Although recycling was not a major concern in 1973, the polyethylene terephthalate or PET soda bottles Wyeth invented are perhaps the most commonly recycled household products used today. Nicknamed Knight, spelled N-I-G-H-T, he was born in India in 1970 but raised from infancy in a posh suburb of Philadelphia. The son of physicians, Knight Shyamalan, is A, the world's youngest heart transplant surgeon, B, an Oscar-nominated screenwriter and director, C, the world's largest manufacturer of curry spice, or D, the developer of the nation's number one selling herbal sleep aid. The answer is B an Oscar-nominated screenwriter and director. Philadelphia's Minaj Knight Shyamalan is making waves in Hollywood. Knight, which is the anglicized version of his middle name, attended private school in Philadelphia. He began making films at age 10 with his father's eight millimeter camera. And by 16, he had made 45 short films. In 1992, after graduating from New York University, he made his first feature film, Praying with Anger followed by 1998's Wide Awake. But it's the writer-director's third film, the psychological thriller, The Sixth Sense, that captured six Oscar nominations and put Knight in the spotlight. Shot in Philadelphia, the film has grossed more than $600 million worldwide. Joseph Smith and Emma Hale eloped in 1827. They made their first home together in Harmony, Pennsylvania, where they lived with Emma's parents. What did Joseph Smith do while living in Harmony? A, he established the Harmonites, a religious sect. B, he started Mrs. Smith's Pies. C, he translated the Book of Mormon plates. Or D, he founded Smith & Wesson Gun Manufacturing. The answer is C. He translated the Book of Mormon plates. Joseph Smith and Emma Hale married and settled in Harmony, Pennsylvania in 1827. Smith declared that a vision of the angel Moroni led him to dig up golden plates covered with sacred writings, which he found in Palmyra, New York. While in Harmony, Joseph translated the golden plates, which eventually were published as the Book of Mormon. Further revelations led Smith to become the founder of a new religion, 
Mormonism. Believers flocked to him, but the hostility of neighbors repeatedly forced the movement to move west, first to Ohio, then to Missouri and Illinois. Today, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, whose members are generally known as Mormons, is headquartered in Salt Lake City, Utah. A copy of the program you've just seen can be purchased through Penn State Media Sales at mediasales.psu.edu or by calling 800-770-2111.